VR has lots of different types of tracking. Body tracking, eye tracking, face tracking, hand tracking, and some that I probably shouldn't mention on a YouTube video. These typically serve to make your VR body more accurate to your real body, but what do you do if there's something that can't be tracked with a traditional method? How about tracking your body, but differently? Using biosensors on a VR headset isn't a new concept. What is, is not having to drop an ungodly amount of money to get them. Biosensors might sound like something super fancy, but they can really be something as simple as a heart rate monitor. In fact, we've actually seen a headset with this before, the HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. It's in the facial interface, really uncomfortable and not the most useful, but hey, it's there. Where things start getting interesting is brain tracking. That sounds expensive, and it definitely can be. This is Galea, the most advanced VR brain interface. It also costs twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars, depending on the headset you get it with. Luckily for us, the thing we care about the most on it is the EEGs. These measure the electrical activity of your brain. There's quite a few devices actually available to consumers that have EEGs in them. Most of them are marketed towards meditation and sleep tracking, and while I certainly could see some benefit from that, that's not what I'm using this thing for. This is a Muse 2 headband, an EEG device with seven sensors and a heart rate monitor. What's really cool about it is that it isn't thousands of dollars, it's 250. Even cheaper if you use code JACOBFAV at checkout or visit the link in the description. It's also the device that's seen the most use in VR. But what exactly can you do with it? The earliest instance I can find of a Muse being used for VR is actually a Skyrim mod. The mod makes your spells stronger when you're focused, and if you're not focused enough, your spells can even backfire and hurt you. That's not even where this thing's seen the most use, though. It's kinda just an unspoken rule of VR that if there's something cool, it probably sees the most use on social VR. For something this complex, you'd expect to have to use Resonite, but no. Brain flows into VR chat, converts the signals from the Muse into OSC data that can drive parameters on an avatar. If you're interested more in this, join BFI VRC's Discord server. There's a lot of good resources there. This does beg the question though, what are these things even tracking? The two most useful ones are focus and relaxation. If I have to explain those, you probably wouldn't get much use out of a brain tracker. If you want conscious control over something, these are what you use. There's also all of these brain waves. They don't make much sense to me, and they're better for more unconscious readings. If you want conscious control over something, you have to train yourself a little bit to do it. This can be difficult to get the hang of, and I can't really give you too many pointers since everyone's brain works different. You just kind of have to play around and see what works for you. As the Skyrim mod proves, this tech definitely has a use outside of just VR chat. Since you're already wearing something on your head when playing VR, it isn't too invasive to have EEG sensors up there too. They could easily be integrated into the head strap of a VR headset in the future to make use of them. Imagine a horror game that ramps it up if it detects you're too relaxed, or maybe a more robust magic system based more on those other brainwaves. This doesn't have to be in a future that far off. The Muse is pretty inexpensive for what it is, and it's surprisingly competent. If you're interested in getting one, you can get it for around 200 bucks if you use my discount code, or the link in the description to buy one.